फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज अंटिल ईरान केम अलॉन्ग इंडिया हैड नेवर बिन डैश इन कबड्डी विद दी ऑप्शन डिफीटेड डिफीटिंग डिफीट डिफीटस्ट वी विल ट्राई टू रिकोगनाइज द टेंस ऑफ द सेंटेंस विच इज पास टेंस बिकॉज हैड इज यूज हियर नाउ वी विल ट्राई एलिमिनेटिंग आर ऑप्शन लेट स्टार्ट विद डी डिफीटस्ट इफ वी डू नॉट नो द एग्जैक्ट मीनिंग ऑफ डिफीटस्ट वी कैन गेस्ट द मीनिंग by putting the word defeatist with other similar words like buddhist or sadist which are noun so we cannot use noun here because we know that verb should be used in the dash position so d is eliminated moving on to c defeat is the present form of the verb which cannot be used in the sentence because the sentence is in the past tense so c is eliminated we are left with b and a options defeating is the continuous form of the verb and a is the past form of the verb so we can say that because the word until is used we know that india was always the winner until iran came that means india has now lost we know the result that means the continuous verb cannot be used so we will use the option a that is defeated question is the fishermen dash the flood victims owed their lives were rewarded by the government with the options whom to which to whom that now this question can be solved by asking a few questions and the first one is who is the subject is it the fishermen or the flood victims the fishermen is the subject because fishermen is the one who got the reward from the government it is about the fishermen so the main subject is fishermen here now next question that we want to ask is who owed their lives owed means ehsan mand hona who owed their lives was it the flood victims or the fishermen it was the flood victims who owed their lives okay so the next question we want to ask is to whom the flood victims owed their lives to whom it was the fishermen the flood victims owed their lives to the fishermen which obviously gave the answer that is c to whom so the next question is radius as well as the height of circular cone is increased by 10% the percentage increase in its volume is so the volume is increased by increasing its height and the radius so how would we do this first we have to know the volume of the cone or any other formula from mensuration chapter uh, we cannot guess the formula and if we want to derive the formula it would be way lengthy and it would be a total waste of time to you so you have to learn these formula and they are not that difficult volume of cone here is 1 by 3 pi r square h after we know the vol- formula for volume we can move on to the values we do not know the value for radius and height we only know how much it is increased that is 10% increase in the radius and 10% increase in the height so i would like to assign the values for both of these variables can i do that obviously we can it would make the calculation easier so i would like to assign the radius as 100 because 100 makes the calculation a little um easy so that's why 100 and i would like to take the value for hi- height also 100 can we take both of these variables value same yes we can because in the question there is no mention that the radius is not equal to height if this would have been mentioned in the question we could not have taken this because this is not given in the question we can simply take radius as 100 and height as 100 now we will increase both of these value by 10% what will be the increase it will be 110 why because 10% we will just add 10 simply so this is the increased this will be the larger value because the cone is increased and this will be the smaller val- value because this, the original cone was smaller so whenever we want to find the increase or decrease in any type of question what do we do we subtract the larger quantity from the smaller quantity here the increased value is obviously larger and the original one was the smaller so to find the increase we will simply subtract the volume of increased cone from the volume of original cone so volume is equal to 1 by 3 pi r square h that means 110 square into 110 
minus 1 by 3 pi originals radius is 100 so 100 square into 100 that is height is this complete it is not the question you are trying to uh, the method that you are trying to approach is correct this will give you the amount that is increased but whenever we are comparing two quantities or two substances and we are trying to find the increase or the decrease we can never just take the subtraction portion we also have to divide it with the original quantity some people would will ask that why do we have to divide with the original quantity it's because you are trying to compare you are trying to compare the increased volume from the original volume this will give you the increase definitely but how much is it increased from the original value so for that answer you have to divide it with the original quantity whenever there is a comparison whenever it is asking what is the increase in some uh, area what is the percentage decrease in area what is the uh, uh, surface area increase or de decrease whenever you are trying to compare the increased quantity from the original quantity you have to first subtract and then take the denominator and what will be the denominator it will always be the original quantity and here the original quantity has the radius of 100 and height also 100 so we will take 100 square into 100 this will be the increased volume We will take common 1 by 3 pi because in the numerator and the denominator 1 by 3 pi is common. What is left with us is 110 square into 110 minus 100 square and here we are left with 100 square into 100. 1 by 3 pi and 1 by 3 pi would cancel and when we will multiply all these uh, 110 and hundreds and then subtract it and divide it with this we will get 33.1 percent why did why did i add percent to it because i have to multiply it with 100 if you multiply with it with 100 it will come the percentage so this is the question from seating arrangement type and we have to arrange these numbers so that we can get the second number from the right. So we have five numbers, we will position them in circles like this. So the first condition is no two order even number are next to each other. Okay. The second condition is the second number from the left. If this is the left and this is the right. What is the second left? This is the leftmost because this is last from the left. And this is the second left. This is the rightmost and this is the second right because it is the second number from the right right side. This is the middle number. Second number from the left is exactly half of the leftmost number. If this is a L, the second number is exactly half. So I have assigned L to the leftmost number and according to the question, the second from the left is exactly half. So L by 2. We will try to uh, place the numbers according to the condition. So first, if this is 10, this can be 5 because this is half. This is the first condition. Second condition would be if this is 4, this would be 2. We have got two possibilities. Moving on to the next condition. The middle number is exactly twice the rightmost number. If this is the rightmost number, I would like to call it as R. The middle number should be 2R. The middle number is exactly twice. So this is twice of R. Okay. So according to our possibilities, if this is 5, we are left with 4 and 2. And if according to the second possibility, we have 4 and 2. So we are left with 10 and 5. So, if this is the case, we have 10, 5, 4, 2 sitting like that. If the second possibility is correct, we have 4, 2, 10, 5. Which of the possibility 1 or 2 is correct? 
Now, if we move to the first condition, it says no two odd or even number are next to each other. But in this case, we have 2 and 10 next to each other. That means this condition is incorrect. We are left with this condition. And the number left with us is 7. Actually, 7 is in the second right um, position, irrespective of the condition. So, basically, this was useless. <laughs> but it is like, actually necessary to understand all the possibilities and we have to... Um, place the numbers according to the conditions so seven is the answer fifth question is some students were not involved in the strike if the above statement is true which of the following conclusions is are logically necessary so in this type of question you have to remember only one thing and that is you do not have to assume anything you cannot make up situations you cannot uh, make up certain conditions or conclusions by yourself you only have to go by the sentence given so we will try to make this diagram so that the sentence is easier to comprehend so the diagram says some student here which are not involved in the strike so the connection between strike and some student is disconnected we know uh, about this student part that it is about some student and they are not involved in the strike so we will come uh, to the conclusions given the first one is some who were involved in the strike were students do we know anything about the people involved in the strike is it given in the sentence no it is not so this conclusion may be correct or maybe not moving on to the second uh, conclusion that is no student was involved in the strike so again it is about the strike do we have any idea about who were involved in the strike how many people were involved in the strike or even someone was involved or not we have no about idea about this, so this conclusion may be correct or may be not. Moving on to the third conclusion, it says at least one student was involved in the strike. Again, it is based on the same strike portion of the sentence. Do we know anything about the people involved in the strike? No. So this conclusion may be correct or this conclusion may be incorrect. Moving on to the fourth conclusion, it says some who were not involved so we will go back to the not part it says some who were not involved okay so it says about some we know who are um, some students here not involved okay this is talking about this condition not involved in the strike that means this condition is true it is talking about this part of the sentence were students yes some students who was not involved in the strike okay so the Fourth is correct. There is no uncertainty about this conclusion. We are totally sure that this is correct. So the option C is correct. Next question says, I read somewhere that in ancient times, the prestige of a kingdom depended upon the number of taxes that it was able to levy on its people. It was very much like the prestige of a headhunter in his own community. So it is trying to compare two situations, situation of kingdom and the situation of headhunter. The prestige of the headhunter depends on something very negative. We are talking about a negative situation here in case of headhunter situation. If both of these situation is equated, that means the prestige of the king would be very negative, would depend on something very negative also. That means he is asking its people to pay a lot of tax. So that this would be the case. Now the question asks, the prestige of the headhunter dependent upon the prestige of the kingdom. No, because headhunter event was separate and the kingdom's event was separate. Only the situation, that means only the result that was unhappiness of the people was compared. Not each event. So, prestige of headhunter had nothing to do with the kingdom. The next, the prestige of the heads. It seems a little incomplete, so second is not the answer. Third, the number of taxes that he could levy. Taxes had nothing to do with headhunter's situation. It was the kingdom's situation. So C is false, D is the answer. Next question is, two trains started at 7 a.m. from the same point. The first train traveled to north at 80 km per hour and second train to south at 100 km per hour. Time at which they were 540 km apart. We have to tell the time in a.m. So it says there are two trains starting from the same point. Let the point be P. First train goes to the north, if this is north, 
it says it goes 80 kilometers per hour and the other train goes south at 100 kilometers per hour so we have to tell that at what time they will be 540 kilometers apart from each other now this is the distance given to us this is speed 1 and this is speed 2 we know that distance and upon time gives us our speed we know the distance we have to find time and we are given two speeds what to do with two speeds whenever we get two speeds uh, a term called relative speed comes into play what is relative speed it is nothing but the addition or maybe subtraction between the two speeds that we are given how do we know that we will subtract or we will add these both speed to get the final speed there is a easy concept from the formula you can tell that speed is directly proportional to the distance that means if two people are going apart the, the distance between them is increasing if the distance will increase the speed will increase too if the speed will increase that means both of their speed has been added so we have to add the speed but if they are going in the opposite direction their distance usually decreases well obviously if the distance decrease that means proportionally their speed will decrease too and what will the decreased speed will be it will be the subtraction between the two speeds so here we are given two speed and the distance between the two trains are increasing or decreasing it is increasing because they started from this position the distance was zero and then they moved apart that means their distance is increasing if the distance is increasing the speed will also increase and how will we get the increased speed obviously by adding we cannot get larger speed by uh, um, subtracting so we will now add both of the speed and that would be 80 plus 100 that is kilometer per hour is our final speed we have to tell the time so time would be distance upon speed that is 540 upon um, 180 54 divided by 180 would give us 3 18 sorry it would give us 3 and what will be the unit it will be hour because the speed was in kilometer per hour so if they started at 7 a.m again the answer will not be 3 some people will get confused and they will write 3 hours which is incorrect you have to write the time not how much hour it took so the final time would be if they started at 7 a.m they will be apart after 3 hours so that means they will be uh, apart for 5 at um, 540 kilometers at 10 a.m so the answer is 10 question is again from the percentage in a country of 1400 million population 70 percent own mobile phones among mobile users only 294 million access internet among the internet users only half buy goods from e-commerce portal what is the percentage of these buyers in the country so um, they uh, have asked you to perform like series of percentage operation let us see how can we do this so the final population total population is 14 hundred million we are going to uh, you know not convert this into zeros we'll just write m for million it says 70 percent own mobile that means of the total 70 percent 70 percent of total obviously it is talking about the total uh, percentage and for the mobile users it says only 70 percent of the total and whenever there is off written it means multiply just know that the multiplication is equal to off so we have to simply multiply 70 percent of total that means 70 percent into 1400 million and to convert the percentage into the value we will cut this percent and just divided by 100 
mm, that is 17 to 14 980 so 980 million people are mobile phone you owners they own mobile among mobile users only 280 294 sorry 294 people a uh, million people they access internet and the rest do not that means 980 minus 294 they do not access internet among the internet users that means from the people that can access internet so we are taking this as our main uh, subject here previously 1400 million people was the main subject then we came to the 980 million and now it is saying that among the mobile users that means among this quantity specifically among the internet users only half buy goods that means to find the people who buy goods we have to divide it by 2 that means 294 divided by 2 are the people with goods it is 1 4 and 7 so 140 do not forget about the million so 147 million people are the people who buy goods what is the percent of these buyers in the country now again it has asked about the percentage of this type of users from the total so from the total we have to divide 147 million from the total that was the 1400 million into 100 which will be the percentage part million million is cancelled 100 100 is cancelled 147 divided by 14 it's 10.5 so this is the answer it is it was just series of certain operations that you had to perform to get the answer first one was the uh, multiplication that was off 70% of the total that would be multiplication from this we had to get the half of the people so we divided it by 2 and from these we had to take out the buyers in the country that means we are comparing two quantities first the goods quantity from the total quantity so the goods people from the total people it would mean that in the denominator we will get the total quantity we will not be doing 1400 million upon 147 million no always the original quantity comes at the bottom as the denominator so 147 million upon 1400 million into 100 that is 10.5 your answer question says the nomenclature of hindustani music has changed over centuries since the medieval period rupert styles were identified as banis that means rupert styles is equal to banis terms like gayaki and baj were used to refer to vocal and instrumental styles respectively that means gayaki was equal to vocal and baj was equal to instrumental styles with institutionalization of music education the term gharana became acceptable that means institutionalization or music education were termed as gharana gharana originally referred to hereditary musicians from a particular lineage including disciples and ground disciples so baj and institution seems incorrect so c would be the answer this question is this and the answer would be c because the government sometimes take in takes into consideration the demands of banking institution as this is mentioned in the second line of the paragraph the banking institutions have been making a demand to reduce interest and finally the government announced the reduction that means c would be the answer the next question is the bt toxin gene from bacillus thuringiensis used to generate genetically modified crops is Bacillus thuringiensis is a very useful bacteria which has a special gene called cry gene present in its plasmid DNA, not chromosomal DNA. It produces a protein called delta endotoxin which is also known as cry protein. It is used to kill many pests, especially lepidopterans. So the answer is a cry. Next question is, which one of the following is used as a pH indicator in animal cell culture medium? Acridine orange, phenol red, bromophenol blue, kumasi blue. So acridine orange is a fluorescent dye which stains DNA, RNA, acidic vacuoles. So it is not a pH indicator. Bromophenol blue is used in page electrophoresis. It is used as a tracking dye. 
when uh, we have to observe the progression of the molecules so we use this dye kumasi blue stains protein that's why it is used in sds page it visualizes protein so it is not the answer phenol red is the answer because it is a ph indicator used in animal cell culture medium it turns yellow when the ph is acidic it turns purple when the ph is basic and when ph is neutral it turns orange to red next question asks about how tetracycline inhibits the protein synthesis and the answer is d because tetracyclines bind to the 30s ribosomal subunit and consequently disrupt the process of protein synthesis by preventing amino acetyl tRNA access to the receptor A site on the mRNA ribosome complex. Therefore, tetracyclines block the initiation of protein synthesis and are thought to have a bacteriostatic effect. Which of the following database is of protein sequence motifs? Procyte, Tremble, Swiss Broad or PDB? PDB is the 3D structure database for proteins and nucleic acids. Procyte is the database for protein sequence motifs. So the procyte, that is A, will be the answer. Another example is enzyme DB. Enzyme DB is again a sequence motif database. It is for enzymes. Next question. The following enzyme is encoded by HIV, reverse transcriptase, phospholipase, phosphatase, ATP synthase. Now, HIV sounds familiar. Why? Because it is the virus that causes AIDS. Very dangerous virus, but there is a special thing about this virus. And that is, HIV virus doesn't contain double-stranded DNA. Instead, it contains single-stranded RNA. So, when it infects the human body, just suppose this is a very healthy body, irrespective of the diagram that I've made. Whenever uh, a virus infects our body, it cannot replicate on its own. It needs a host. Here, the host is human body. So what it does is, is first cause the infection. And in order to infect the whole human body, one virus is not enough. It needs thousands and thousands and it needs to make its babies again and again. So that if one virus is killed by our immune system, like 300 others can compensate for this. So for the replication of virus, which is the second step, it needs our machinery. That means it needs host's machinery. But there is a slight problem here. Our genetic material is DNA. Virus's genetic material is RNA. How can it insert its genetic material in our genetic material to hack it? So there is a special enzyme called reverse transcriptase, which is, as the name suggests, it is an enzyme that helps the virus to convert its genetic material into a DNA type of form. It converts its RNA into cDNA. That is complementary DNA. Now this DNA is capable enough to insert, be inserted in our DNA, which will be now controlled by the virus. You know, viruses. It is now adulterated. It will now make these virus babies. It will not form uh, our normal uh, DNA. It is now a bad type of DNA. It will make more viruses. So this is what HIV does mainly. Now, if we look at other options, phospholipase is a type of uh, enzyme that hydrolyzes uh, lipids into fatty acids. Phosphatase is a type of uh, enzyme that uh, removes phosphate group. ATP synthase is a type of enzyme that converts um, ADP plus PI, that is inorganic phosphate, into ATP. So this is a very important enzyme, but it is not used for the HIV virus. So the answer will be reverse transcriptase. Which of the following techniques can be used to compute the expression of large number of genes in two biological samples in a single experiment? Now, polymerase chain reaction is a technique by which we can amplify the amount of DNA that we already have. We can exponentially increase the DNA by duplicating it. So this is not our answer. DNA microarray is a technique by which we can detect the expression of DNA, expression of genes. But can it be used to express large number of genes? Yes, we can definitely do that. We use a microarray plate which has spots on it and that spots contains DNA that we want to detect, the small part of DNA. And our sample is converted, DNA sample is converted from DNA to cDNA or it can be RNA, we can convert it into cDNA. Then the cDNA is tagged with fluorescent probes so that it is easier to detect and then we hybridize the cDNA 
with our spots DNA. If mm, the hybrid hybridization is successful, they will attach and if the hybridization is unsuccessful, it, the cDNA, the sample, will wash away. Later, this can be detected and we can analyze the expression of genes. Northern and Southern hybridization is for the analysis of RNA for Northern and DNA for Southern hybridization. So the answer would be DNA microarray, that is B. Which is not the part of human's non-specific defense system, interferons, mucus, saliva or antibody. Uh, interferons are small, viral, small proteins that act against viral infections non-specifically. They do not require, uh, recognize a specific type of virus all the time. So this cannot be our answer. Moving on to mucus. Mucus is again a non-specific type, type of defense uh, system because whatever pathogen or whatever antigen, doesn't matter what type it is, doesn't matter about its specificity, it just gets stuck on the mucus layer. So again, it is a part of non-specific defense system. Saliva Again, it is non-specific. Antibodies are a part of defense system which is called as third line of the third line of defense system. Antibodies specificity is defined by the uh, CDR regions in its variable region. So again, antibody is a specific type of defense system. Next question asks in which phase DNA synthesis occurs. So DNA synthesis is referring to DNA replication. This is how DNA is synthesized by replicating it. There is no difference. So, a DNA synthesis or replication occurs in S phase. S phase is the part of interface. G0, G1 and G2 are the gap phases. G stands for gap and S stands for synthesis. Hi guys, so this was the first part of my first video. I apologize if the editing was a little wonky. I am really new at this and I wanted to post a video like this not for the motive of over explaining things I just wanted to get a video out there because rarely do I ever see a channel related to biotechnology and even if this video helps just one person it would be worth it so do not forget to check out the description box down below if you have any questions comments or concerns you can post them in the co comment section and yeah look out for the next one thank you